this was the South Tower. This was 104, 106 stories tall. This is what is left. Up there was the North Tower. And you look, and you see, and there's no concrete. There's very little concrete. All you see is aluminum and steel. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized. And I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. And what's to explain, Governor, the smoke that still comes out there's of the fire? There's still fire down below. There is such an incredibly deep pile of rubble, and the, the tower goes down five, six stories underground, that uh, there's still fire underneath. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a board at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven. You know, it was just boring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that shit? You're gonna hold, we're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. Red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fire is going to still burn it. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. Every now and then, one of the pieces of equipment will dig in, will open up a small area, the oxygen will rush in, and you'll get this plume of brown black smoke coming up. That's because that fire just got more oxygen. I mean, these things are burning. At one point, I think they were about 2,800 degrees. Underground fires, ignited by burning jet fuel, smoldered for months, fed by molten steel and buried carpeting, office furniture, wood paneling, and paper. Still toed boots is one of the biggest things. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails. Like you're in a foundry. Yeah. Like lava. Like lava. Like lava. One of the more unusual artifacts to emerge from the rubble is this rock-like <laughs> object that has come to be known as the meteorite. But, uh, you know, if the boots are, steel toe boots are standing, you know, melting, uh, how hot does your oven need to be for the steel to melt? And what would happen to your feet, you know, in there? <laughs> the, the, yeah, incinerated. But she's not lying. She's repeating what she believes because that's what she was told and never thought twice about it. We have an entire nation that was that fell into that routine. Entire world. And it gets repeated and repeated and repeated. And folks forget to stop and think. But I'm asking all of you to stop and think. Could those feet be in boots that are melting, where the steel is melting? If it is the psyops, why are they lying about the high temperature? Because people accept it and move on. Now, what was what why did the people need an answer? What was the question? The boots were disintegrating, maybe. And the worker wanted to know why his boots disintegrate after two hours. They tell him that's, that it's the molten metal under, underground. They don't tell him it's molecular dissociation that's affecting his boots. This, whatever it is that's happening is contaminated the boots, and the steel in his boots might be getting affected. I think one of the most interesting things when you talk to Willie Rodriguez and the police and fire guys, there were no fires in the stairwells, there were no fires in the elevators, there were no lower fires in the tower whatsoever when they were going up there doing the rescue. So in the fuel, you got 8,000 gallons of JP4, that, I mean, that stuff's gone instantaneously, so you don't have it rushing down and burning everything. So when you talk to the guys who were there, talk to Willie, up doing the uh, rescues, there was no fire down there. In fact, so, there was a huge amount of water down yeah. Well, after they ran the fire hoses. But the fire hoses weren't even up at the top. You know, some of the stuff was going, but it just wasn't happening. Somebody has a question back here. Yeah, plenty of people talking about the boots. Yeah. Has anybody or any of you, anybody who had foot injuries? No. I haven't heard of anybody that burned on their feet. No, I didn't. And, yeah. 
are you going to explain what it is? Then? Yeah, we okay, continue on here. So here we have this grill. You know, this is steel with a regular, you know, office fire. So what? You know, office fires uh, don't uh, melt steel, much less steel-toed boots. <coughs> Now here's Rudy Giuliani talking about something. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. I could be standing here and you could be standing there and I could be describing to you, Governor, the, the, the site and then a fire would break out in between us and uh, it was just by luck or the design of God that we weren't killed. <laughs> Built into a thermometer. Yeah, that, that just where was uh, Rudy Giuliani? It was hell almost opening up. Yeah. <laughs> so we saw this picture. How do we know that that was real? How do we know if it was a psyops? A week later, they have another picture and it doesn't show anything hot. Well, if it was hot here, it's cooled off immediately, so why do we have the story about things continuing to be hot? Plus, we have this, this guy climbing down into the ground right at that place. That's right where they were. That's the hole number two. That's a, a map of it. And that's on the 18th, two days after this picture and well before this picture was taken. Molten metal. Ah. I wonder if you're familiar with this that happened uh, over a week ago. The steam explosion yeah. in New York. And uh, the poor fellow who's at the wrong place at the wrong time with his truck here. Now we have uh, a video. in that, that uh, tow truck, third degree burns over 80% of his body and was intensive care. I, I, I hope he is hanging on, but it didn't look very good, but what I read in the paper. Uh, water hits something hot, it explodes. It, it expands by a factor of 1600. That's how come pressure cookers give off steam when you cook food. On the afternoon of 9-11, there was a water main that broke on West Street made this lake. There's a guy wading out into the middle of the lake. Where's the steam explosion? Now, do you think these guys are walking out in the middle of steam? But the cover story convinced us that that's perfectly normal for fires that are burning for 99 days. They need that cover story. But from what I see here, these guys are not hot. There's something else. And people would have been asking questions. What is that coming out of the ground? That's a lot of fuming going on. You know, if they're standing on a grill, wouldn't they look more like a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> and this is the end of October. There's some pretty serious fuming going on. They're wetting it down, but those, those diggers are still operational, so that can't be that hot. And the guy in the cab can't be that hot. From the 15th, you have what looks like steam shooting out. Remember the 14th, it rained. It's dry on the 15th, you have this steam looking stuff. On the 20th, it's raining, no steam. And you have wet puddles over all of the beams. So uh, as for uh, molten metal, I would question that. This takes a little bit to load. <clears throat> but at a time when we're all vulnerable, just like we're given the names of, uh, you know, 19 bad guys with box cutters, did anybody question that? The, the saddest part I had on 9-11 was before noon, my graduate student came up to me and said, Dr. Wood, who's, who's uh, you know, Bin Laden and what's Al-Qaeda? What, how, how come they had these names already? As I think uh, uh, Morgan Reynolds will show us uh, tomorrow, they had the crime solved in what, 60, less than 60 seconds. On the news today, they said it would take a year to solve what happened to the bridge in Minneapolis. Or even two years. 
But notice the FBI declared it couldn't be terrorism instantly. Yeah, right, immediately.